Thanks. And if you could introduce yourselves to our crowd. <coughs> oh, right off. Okay. I'm Patience Boyd, Common Cod member number three. <laughs> and welcome to our annual Bring the People You Make Things For meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lanny Eisenberg. This is my second year attending this event, and it's the best thing ever. I'm Roxanne Reddington Wild. Several years ago, I came to this and was deeply jealous of the people standing up here doing the PowerPoint karaoke. <laughs> hoping I, I don't know that way you'd be deeply jealous of me, but I hope that I can live up to what everybody else has done this morning. <laughs> so, a brief review. Every contestant will have six slides that will advance every 15 seconds, and they can tell any story or multiple stories that they, of their choosing. At, after the first six slides, a slide saying switch will come up, and then they pass the mic on to the next person. And can we end that story, or do we keep it going? From, you from you end, end it, whatever. If the next person wants to keep it going, that's up to them. <laughs> okay. And who will be the first victim? I mean, you know, volunteer. Okay. Ah, once upon a time when the world was young and innocent, there was a green, green, but enthusiastic gecko. He wasn't quite certain what he was, but he knew the world was out there and he was coming for it. Get ready for me, said the world. And you know who he actually met the first time he leapt out upon the world? It was the Iceman delivery guy. But the Iceman was rather confused because he also thought he represented Netflix. And he said, dear charming gecko, shall I prepare drinks for you? Or ah, come along with me and we shall knit together charming pink sweaters from live wool. <laughs> the gecko looked at the, all those sheep who he encountered following the Iceman, and he said, bah? <laughs> but instead, they replied back to him, who, who, who are you? I don't know, said the charming green gecko. I have no idea at all. And so he said, I'm going to have to continue on and stop egging me on, but, you know... I have to decide, do I like this sweet, innocent world, or is it really quite scary being out here with pink sheep, icemen who sell Netflix, or Netflix that sells ice, and, oh my God, there's children in the world. Our charming gecko, green gecko, realized that the world was not a sweet and innocent place. The world was actually exceedingly, exceedingly messy, but enthusiastic. All right, well, I'm fond of your neighborhood government coming around and giving you a presentation on why the budget is like it is. Um, yes, we have fruit. The fruit is enthusiastic about each other, though one of them seems to be suffering a little harassment. Um, yes, this is harder than it looks. Is that even a dog? No, it's a goat. So zoning needs to address goats and fences. Is this the way that we really want our neighborhood to look? <laughs> or this? <laughs> These people are so bland. I don't know. We need to get some paint on those buildings, and then they will show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, where's it coming? Oh, but the, the seal. The seal's in the harbor. They have such a fun recreational program, and your tax dollars are really helping these seals have a healthy, happy lifestyle, just kicking back and enjoying. And we also have recreational programs for youth with arts and crafts, except we sort of didn't buy enough supplies, so this lady has volunteered to be the paper for tonight. <laughs> And we have other crafts, and isn't it amazing what you can do with hot glue? <laughs> <laughs> and food scraps. <laughs> All right. There we go. Whoops. Ready? Okay, yes. I think so. 
Ah, yes. The zombies are coming. What to do in case of a zombie apocalypse? Um, you certainly need to be inside somewhere, and if you get outside, just don't leave your blood anywhere, okay? The, um, it's important to note that this zombie is wearing jeans, and um, this guy is post-zombie apocalyptic age. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a person living in there. That's the new, this, this is the new housing uh, for post-apocalyptic um, life. So you live inside a dragon, and the dogs have taken over, obviously. And this man survived the apocalypse because he certainly knows more than the rest of us. These are also formerly space shuttle. Um, they're, they're repurposed space shuttle um, cabins. And these folks, um, well, you can tell why they survived the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> because they're a little bit insane and know how to have fun. I'm pretty sure that zombies approve of fun. so. Um, you got to make sure to have your wacky bathing suit on. And he is a result of the fun, you guys. Um, and he knows it. He knows it. And um, I'm pretty sure that that, so those, he's got um, bed clothes made from the zombie pants. And oh, and here's one of the dogs after he took his ride in the NASA, in the NASA approved containers. He made pals with a post apocalyptic elephant, um, and they both live in that dragon. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much to our volunteers. In case you are wondering, they each won a Common Cod Fiber Guild water bottle. Woo!